Welcome back to the Boys and Bowlers podcast. We're down here in the Rat Tail Bunker Barbershop Studio. We got our first in-studio guest, none other than John Scheimer. Were you going to put in his middle name? I was going to say, John motherfucking Scheimer. <laughs> it was going like to be like a WWE entrance. Like Broken Glass? Yeah. Broken, what's Broken Glass? Well, like when Stone Cold. Yeah, Stone Cold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stone Cold, like, yeah. Stone Cold, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Give me a hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John motherfucking shot. John he just comes in, stuns somebody. <laughs> John, welcome to welcome. the studio. I get to look at you now. <laughs> Something new and different. It's a beautiful thing. We looked at <laughs> him. We thing. were looking at him when. Yeah, but it's like a. It was on a screen. But it's You're like right. in the metaverse. Right. The last time was even better. I had the uh, Arsenal jersey reveal. Oh, that, <laughs> that's I right. Know. Yeah. With the scarf, too. <laughs> yeah, that was a mid season. No, that was a late to mid season. Yeah, late mid season. Yeah. So I John, almost had my prediction correct. I was so annoyed. One point off. Uh, from what? From what? So, I predicted Arsenal was going to finish ahead of Tottenham. Oh. Yeah, it was close. It brought, it brought, they took it down to the wire. Yeah. Honestly, oh, well. Tottenham, well, we've already talked about this a little bit, but Tottenham saved a lot of people. Oh, true, true. The last game where they, where they smacked down Leicester. Oh, the smackdown. Yep. But we're not here to talk about the Prem. Prem's over. For the season. The Prem's never over, Jeff. I know. The Prem's, a lot of dealings are going on it right now. lives on in my soul. We're here to talk about Euros 2020, but in this case, 2021. It's so funny. They still talk about it like the Euros 2020, but it's in 21. Like, if you watch pundits, like, on the, the leader on the bottom, it will be like, Euros 2020. It's a branding thing. I think it is, and I think it's they like also want to keep the year accurate so they can do it, like, every four. I do yeah. think, I, I totally it's think it's not like they're going to go to 2025 branding. for the next year one, you know. Definitely not. No. Definitely not. It's an odd year. It's a weird thing. But starting with the Euros, one of the things that we were all kind of, as we're getting ready for this episode, Jeff, you were like, oh, uh, you know, English teams are going to be playing all at home this year. And we're like, wait, what? And then we look through the host countries, and there's 11 host countries from which I will now name in alphabetic order, Azerbaijan, Denmark, England, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Netherlands, Romania, Russia, Scotland, and Spain. So the games are going to be played all over, and as... John or I think John did you point out that England has all their games at home or Jeff was that you yeah they have all their games at home don't think it will actually be in Qatar I think they'll pull out of that for some reason I just think eh. that's I, I think that's that, next year I, world I, cup? I still think about it, the world I cup? Still, yeah I'm talking about the world cup I oh my think, god you're jumping around like a yeah. Mexican jumping bean dude <laughs> hop, 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 hop. no dude let's talk about the euros all right we're gonna talk. <laughs> Jeez, I don't guys. think it's gonna be a cutter I don't think it's gonna be a cut we're not talking about cutter that was a really good impression. <laughs> I, I hate how good it was. I don't think it's going to be a cutter. I don't think it's going to be a cutter. Oh. Anyway, anyway, I was in my backswing. Uh, what was I saying? Now you threw me off. It was a sweet impression. It doesn't matter. You're like getting all it does matter. hot okay, and bothered about cutter. Here we cutter. go. All right, go Where's ahead. the final? Do we know where the final is? Or is it just going to be like wherever? They, It's like a judgment. I bet they have like a backup plan of the backup plan of the backup plan. <laughs> wherever is like the least worst for COVID. Hopefully COVID isn't spiking now during this time. I think because of the vaccination rates. I mean, they're all developed countries, right? So it's not they have vaccine access. I mean, I somebody, think in theory, somebody pull up some numbers on that one. Yeah, I mean, I think in theory they're vaccine. I mean, for us to know what these 11 countries <laughs> nuanced vac- vaccination rates is going to be is kind of tough. I think in theory there shouldn't be a problem, which is kind of great because hopefully we can get this tournament out and, you know, it can be played and done. The Euros has always been about dark horses. You had, in 2008, Russia went to the semis, and they lost to Spain. In 2012, there w- was it 2012 where Ireland actually, like, quasi did well, and then they got beat up by Spain? But anyways, 2016, Wales went to the semis. I'm pretty sure I'm right. And then Portugal beat them. That was actually the only time Portugal actually won, and they actually played really, really well. But I'm expecting there to be some serious dark horses, especially as John pointed out, how brutal that group of death is. It's like, I don't think the Euros has ever had a group like that. There's three teams there that could potentially win it on paper. What, 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 what group is that? Group F. And John, who's in that group? Just, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. France, Germany, Portugal, and then Hungary gets to be the lambs out to slaughter. This is a group that could go seven, 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 and zero. (laughs) Where none of them actually lose any games i'm talking about like tying uh, yeah a win win and a tie okay so you get three points for a win right is this your first yeah this your first beer all right dude 
It's been a long. It's been a long season. Well, Jay, been, that's uh, not that's not mathematically possible to have all three teams go two zero and one. Why not? Because one of the teams would have to lose a match. You can't win. You can't have three teams go two zero and one. You'd have to have one, t- unless you're talking about the one as a loss. You can't have three teams. One is a loss. But no, you know what? Scrap what I said. John's right. It's actually mathematically impossible. Yeah. I just did it in my head. I Goodwill hunted that in my head. Yeah. yeah. You can't do that. <laughs> All right. Well, who do you think is coming out of this group? And actually, what are the Hungary's chances to come out of this group? Oh, my God. Bad. 0.0000000000000000000. How do they even qualify? That's what I want to know. So John's saying they have a chance is what I just said. <laughs> You're saying I have a chance. I mean, look, Portugal has got in groups of death before and not gotten out of it. Most recently, the World Cup. But this Portugal team is different. Because they have... Because they have Penandes, duh. Oh, true, true, true. <laughs> they have Penandes, Jota, Ronaldo. Neves. Neves. Jota. They they're really they're really okay. So who's their goalkeeper? Patricio. Yeah, yeah. Who's very underrated. Very good Super goalkeeper. Super underrated. So you, you're saying underrated. they're like wolves, but with Bruno Fernandez and a little guy named Ronaldo <laughs> and Joao Felix. Oh, Joao Felix. Felix. Yeah. They're so oh, they're good. They're good. Silva. No, oh, they're good. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Shit, what are the chances good. that Ruben Diaz? What are the chances that they Pepe get out? Pepe. Better than one in three. I think it's going to be Portugal and France. I know, John. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. He's Just remember, fan. guys, third place finishers can go through. Third place finishers can go through. So, John, are you thinking that Portugal, France are direct and then Germany gets through in the third? I hope so. Um, you know, when you're talking about dark horses, it sounds really funny to me, but I think Germany could be a dark horse in, that, in this tournament. I think they could – they won't – be one of those top two placers but i still think they would have a chance to go all the way and run the whole table after that i think they'll finish in third place you have to remember that this is also uh joaquin loves uh last tournament and i do think that his players will play for him in this tournament they didn't seem to want to play for him in the last tournament and uh they do have a very good roster nonetheless so you got rudiger their problems at center back. <laughs> There's no question about that. Jesus. <laughs> Who is there? Can you talk to us a little bit about their potential lineup or things maybe we should be looking at? Obviously, potential lineups are really tough to kind of nab down right now. And we've been looking and, you know, looking pre recording at all of these potential lineups. We still have injuries that are going to happen. There's other things that could happen. I'm excited to see Goretzka's muscles. He's a very <laughs> big boy, he's a very jacked. He's, he's Koretska got on a <coughs> great COVID workout plan last yeah, year. Let's just say real that. Real the guy buff. hit the juice. He's real buff. He got on that Adama Traore <laughs> just um, push up plan. No, I like for me. I, no weights. Jay and I talked about this uh, last week a little bit. I think uh, Kimish is uh, one of the. Uh, best holding center midfielders in the world right now. I He might be. If you look at it, he might be the best in the entire world right now. And I don't think that's, you know, that's not blasphemy. That's not an overstatement. He's tremendous. But if I was Germany in this tournament, I'm either playing him at center back or right back because they have a lot of really good midfielders. Gundogan had a great year. Tony Cruz is still Tony Cruz. You've got Goretzka, um, Jamal uh, Musiada. Uh, or Musiala, I should say. He's uh, super nice. Jeff and I, Jeff, he was the guy we watched the other day. We just like diced three people for Bayern and then slotted. I mean, dude, yeah, he's young cla- too. Right? Yeah, super yeah. class. He's, he's, I mean, if he gets some time this this tournament, he's going to surprise some people, and he's going to he's he might be their super sub this tournament. But he's who's scoring their goals? That's what I want to know. Dude, okay. Timo, Timo Werner, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> The guy's just straight. Oh my god! He's a Champions so, League winner, Jeff. Can I say That's this? True. I hope that I hope that Joaquin Love uh, takes a page out of Chelsea's book and puts Kai Havertz as a false nine and plays him in that spot. And then you've got uh, Serge Gnabry and uh, Leroy Sané playing on the flanks, and that's to me a pretty dangerous front running group. I mean, so and Werner's just gonna be running around causing problems. Like pressing. That's basically. what that's what Werner does. You yeah. bring him into just yeah. Like, basically, <laughs> you just have him run around like a little 
<laughs> annoying. A little what? Find the animal. Guy. Are you going to pick a creature, though? I don't know. Like a... Like an Ewok. <laughs> a really fast Ewok. We're deep in Star Wars lore right now, off <laughs> off recording, so like an Ewok. <laughs> Not really like an Ewok, but he does... I, I will give him credit for that. He does do some... I want to ask John a question because John said he thinks Kimmich is the best holding midfielder, center holding yeah, holding midfielder. Do you think he's better than if you're starting a team? Do you you take him over Conte? Think about this right now. Yes. Oh, they play in different leagues. I don't give a shit. The ball's round. What uh, age is what age is Kimmich and what age is Conte? I mean, that's that's probably one of the Con- number- yeah. But Conte's motor is like makes up for years. It's just like Ronaldo. Ronaldo's 35, but dude, he like broke a broke some like speed thing the other day he ran 100 meters in 10 seconds the other Kimish day is something. a two-way player i mean it's hard to say i mean conte is such a stud he really is at the end of the day but i don't know i'm german <laughs> Bayern won the champions league last year they probably would have won it again this year if Lewandowski didn't get hurt um you Fair. know that's that's an, i mean this year in the champions league chelsea won it there will always be asterisks right most of the season there were absolutely zero fans there was a Mbappe injury on the other side, which helped City. There was a Lewandowski injury, also helping City. There were like a bunch of things that had to fall into place. Chelsea also got a very nice draw in the Champions League. We had to play some people. We had to play the winners of La Liga, the runners up of La Liga. I <laughs> we're not going to in we, one we of the worst La Liga seasons in a long time. In I one mean, of the worst La Liga seasons, you know. Let's the, be the, honest about that. The thing with La Liga is like it's still competitive, but. The, their competitive level has dropped off significantly because it was still a, it, in the end it came down to the last two weeks, but those teams are just you know they're not the same they're not they're, they're not what they were five years ago ten years ago not at all not at all but getting back to your Kimmich point I do think Kimmich obviously is class and we've talked about this is there any way that you could put him in the middle and then if you do put him in the middle you know the lineup I think we're all kind of looking at is you have a Gundogan, Cruz and Havertz kind of in a false nine. Maybe even behind Werner because they work well together. You know, if you push Kimmich in the midfield of those three, who are you taking out? I'm assuming it's got to be Havertz. No, I take Cruz out. You take Cruz out. I Do you think, think he's slowing down? You think he's losing his, a little bit. his his pace a little? Yeah, I mean, he's. I said just a couple seconds ago, it's Tony Cruz, and he's he's never been about pace. I mean, the guy's. Not fast, but I think if you look at like the last World Cup, he was a pretty big underperformer in that team. Him and Werner were, uh, or Werner, well, I should say, uh, were probably the two of the more disappointing players for that team. So, um, and I think even though Harvard didn't have the best year for Chelsea this year, I think um, again he's the only guy out of the you know when I look at their roster, he's the only guy that really can play that false nine position, and even maybe just play it as a regular nine. I mean, I think he's good enough. He's got, he's got sneaky speed. He's quick. He's he ex- sneaky speed. He's super technical. I mean, and Chelsea fans didn't get to see enough of that this last year. But he's, he's on the come, and I think he he will play well in this tournament. I think he could, he could have a pretty good tournament if they play him in that spot. Especially when you've got, Gnabry and Sane are just absolute burners on the flanks. I mean, you're gonna get services, and that was like. That was a part of the last tournament that was so annoying. Like, Werner just sucked in the last World Cup. And uh, I've not been a fan of his since then. He's been a huge disappointment for me. And Chelsea got to experience that this year. So you got a taste of uh, some of the medicine that, as a German fan, I've been dealing with for the last four years. So I think John's right. One of my dark horse, I have like two dark horses in my head. And one of them, ironically, is Germany. Normally, you wouldn't think of Germany. No. You would think of Germany as a favorite. But the current team and after the last World Cup, where the only thing Cruz did do is he had that sweet free kick, yes. which kept, honestly just kept their hopes alive. That's yes. all it did. It just kicked the can down the curb. Germany, for me, is a dark horse. And I do think he, the the guy, Musiala, whatever his name is, or Havertz, those are my two potentials for young player of the tournament because I think that they both could have, you know, Havertz just scoring the Champions League final. He's floating. I think he's still trying to get some confidence in him. You could see it in his interview afterwards yeah oh god his interview was absolutely gold <laughs> legend that at the end of this uh <laughs> podcast unreal but i just i just won the champions league fuck all of you <laughs> basically <laughs> which is awesome but i i don't so what's know your, what's your other dark horse team 
But other, I'll, I'll get there. Oh. I want to. I want to. I want to go through the groups. All the groups. <laughs> Some of the groups. Okay. Like ten of them. Okay. <laughs> No, I, I I completely agree with John. I think Kimmich out of the midfield though does it's not the coolest thing in the world, but like it's also not the end of the world. So okay, we so we got on this we got Portugal, France, direct Germany, probably a high third, and I think Hungary's chances of getting out of this group are one in a hundred. If Hungary gets out of this group, whatever team the whatever two teams didn't direct go, that coach is very likely losing his job. Do you think the winner of this tournament comes from this group? One hundred percent. I yes. think okay. the chances are exceedingly high. I think you might see the two teams at the top of this group in the final. I agree. I mean, you may see a, re- a redo of twenty sixteen Portugal France final. No one would complain. It would be a phenomenal final because that Portuguese team in twenty sixteen was all about. It was like Mourinho whispered in all their ears at night because they just sat in on the lowest of blocks <laughs> and they had Ronaldo up top. And it honestly looked like Inter Milan in 2010. Ronaldo Sanchez playing a pretty pivotal role in that tournament. Yeah, and then he and dropped he's off. he's starting to play well again. He Is hasn't he? played well for a while. He's starting to play okay, well again. Okay, because he dropped off. He, like, you know, he peaked, off the cliff. got he into Bayern, Bayern and, and then just... <laughs> so, okay, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I think 9 out of 10 times the, the winner will come out of this group. Next group is Group E. You would think that Spain and Sweden would come out of this group. I thought Sweden was actually really fun to watch in the last World Cup. However, though, this is a group where I feel like Poland, if Lewandowski is playing well, they could cause some problems. He's the best player in the world right now. Pound for pound, other than N'Golo Conte, I agree with you. <laughs> in Conte, we trust. <laughs> I mean, again, Lewandowski is just gonna Bayern Munich would have won the, the Champions League again this year if he was healthy. That's all I'll say. How healthy is he? That's the question. He is came he back like, and started scoring again at the end of the season. Oh, okay. So he's like, season, he's, so. he's match fit. I mean, he, he okay. broke the all time record for Bundesliga goals in a season. So That's right. He broke the record. The Jerd Muller record. Gerd? Jerd? Gerd. 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 I'm trying to pull They're up. They're bomber. I was trying to pull up. Who am I trying to pull? I'm trying to pull up Spain's team, but I'll talk about Sweden's team. I the thing, yeah. Here, well, here we'll talk about Spain. The thing with Spain is, it's just like I look at this potential team, and obviously this. I mean, who are these guys? Whose man's is this? <laughs> like they used to be like world hitters. They used to be FIFA 11. Used to be like seven dudes from Spain, and now I look at it. And it's just like academy kids from Real, Villarreal, Sevilla, Barcelona, and that's it. Like the, mean, the glory years of Spain when they won Euro World Cup Euro, that team is gone. And especially with Sergio Ramos's injury, I figured if they had Ramos in the back and De Gea in goal, I figured they'd be okay. Did Kepa get the call up? Kepa did not get the call. Up. Dang, Kepa dude. won. Cold blooded. He won the. Ch- <laughs> Yeah, tell me the last time no a goalie bloody. wins the Champions League and doesn't even get a call. Not oh, even come third. On. Come on. He's, come in, on. he's garbage. We know he's Not garbage. even third on the bench, dude. Bow down, bitches. Bow down. As Beyonce <laughs> once said, bow down, bitches. Jeff, no they one's happier La- than Kevin no one's to, a lift part that, of the to lift that to lift the cup. Laporte, Laporte is the starting center back. That was the sneaky move of the year. I mean, that guy is just an absolute stud. Uh, yeah, I mean, Lorente, Tiago gonna hack a few ankles i think busquets uh, <laughs> busquets is like putting cruz in there yeah i just think he's he's too. a little old he's old and after that third game in what 12 13 days he's just gonna be really don't, feeling it don't you think coke probably plays that spot more than busquets at this point i totally think coke plays yeah. that spot more than busquets he'll Koke's probably a rotate really him. good midfielder he, he's the heart and soul of that Atletico team. He is. He is a really good midfielder, and I was actually really surprised how poorly he played over the two legs against Chelsea in the Champions League. Because I just, I always thought I just so much respect for him over the years. I mean, Dick, you know, let's hats off to Atleti for winning, <laughs> for winning La Liga in between the two biggest horses probably in the world as far as clubs. I mean, so those are two of the five biggest clubs in the world. I think De Gea and goal, Roberto and and Alba outside is nice. My thing is just like they don't have any forwards that scare me. I would like to see Lucas Vasquez up there as forward, or I would like to see Asensio as forward, because none of the forwards in some of the things I've seen. Like if you're starting Morata as forward, 
there's zero chance. It's just win weird the that they have like even made L- the team. Lorente, Lorente uh, playing like as a false nine, but like as a like attacking midfielder. Morata yeah, didn't like make the weird. team. He didn't make the team. Didn't Thank make the team. God. Oh no, I'm sorry. Nope, I'm wrong about that. He did make the team. Oh. <laughs> he read the wrong. Uh, I was reading the wrong. Sky Sports at, report. He was looking at the other other Spain team. Yeah. I'm trying to pull up their rosters from like the last couple of games that they played to see like the lineups that they've been playing. So I'm gonna go with Spain and is, Poland coming out of this. My question is: Is Ramos still hurt? Is he playing? He's not coming. He's, he's not. not play, he's team. not playing in the. No, he's not on the team. He's I definitely. He's that. absolutely not on the team. Okay. I'm going Spain and Poland coming out of this, and I got Sweden in a potential third. What do you guys got for this group? That sounds right to me. That sounds right. And I just Slovak- I don't know anything about Slovakia. And I just saw Poland strictly because of the Lewandowski factor. I don't really know much about Slovakia, and I haven't. They got Skriniar. It's the only player that I really recognize. I mean, I think it'll it'll be a really good battle for that second and third spot in that group. I think. I mean, none of those teams are really going to pull away from each other, but I think when you have a guy like Lewandowski, he's just going to probably guarantee that he scores like he's just two pretty big goals in the group stages. That that should be enough to get them through. He should score four goals in the group stage, in my opinion, against these teams. Yes, but we'll see. We'll see. He's also used to getting Bayern Munich like service and domination. So, I mean, Colombia beat Poland fairly handily in 2018. I don't know. I just just a point I wanted to make in general. Doesn't really lead. Oh, because you're Colombian heritage. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Got it. I I understand now. Did you black out? You didn't. I did. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't clear. Sometimes. Okay, Group okay. D. England, Croatia, Scotland, and the Czech Republic. Oh, my God. This if I have to hear more about this stupid England national team, I'm going to throw up in my mouth. Jeff, you don't care about our colonial forefathers? <laughs> I just have to hear about – it's just another team that's, like, overly hyped, and they're going to do nothing. And in the, in, they'll make out of the group stage and then just flounder. Do they win the group stage? Jeff? Uh, it doesn't matter. They'll make it out of it. They'll be second. I mean, that's just how So I they'll feel. be second. In the group stage. So who's first in this group, Jeff? Uh, Between England, uh, Croatia, Scotland, and the Czech Republic. Uh, pff, oh, Croatia, maybe. Croatia could win the totally. Totally. Croatia's had their ticket for a long time. Croatia, they're all they're they're a little old as a team. Croatia was the team the in '08 that kept England out of the Euros, and Croatia also beat them in 2018 to keep them out of the final. So, how can I ask something? Yes. How did Nick Pope not make the English national team roster? Who made? Who made the Dean pick? Henderson, yep. Pickford, Sam Johnstone, and Jordan Pickford? How did Nick Pope not make it over Sam Nick, Johnstone? Nick Pope might have been the best goalkeeper the last two years in the Premier League. Mm. He's an unbelievable shot stopper. Because he's on Burnley? Yeah. It's, it's really it's a Burnley bias. Yeah, but he, last, the old Burnley last bias. Last year he led the league in clean sh- not 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 this two seasons ago, he led the league in clean sheets. That's like uh, that's that's a baffling snub. to me. That's a they snub. have their own. I, I they have some injury. There. I mean, Trent Alexander Arnold's hurt. Henderson, I don't know what his injury status is. If we're talking about the English national team, yeah, but but just focusing on the goalies. How does Johnstone get, get over Nick? Pope? They like Johnstone for some reason. I don't even know He's what younger. team he plays for. I don't know. West Brom. West Brom. What? Nick Pope is okay. That makes no sense. I was looking at Nick Pope for a while as a guy to come into Chelsea to solve our Kepa problems because he did an English dude. Oh yeah, get that homegrown factor. Get that homegrown. Uh, well, so Jeff, you got Croatia. I just, I, just wanna... I think Croatia. I think they got Perisic and uh, Modric, they're, and they're running I it mean, back. They've got pretty much the same roster. Same, I think the last same, up. same roster. They're old, experienced. I actually am going to go against you on this. I think England's going to win this group okay. fairly handedly. I don't know. I think they're going to beat the shit out of Scotland. Like, that yeah. is going to be reverse Braveheart situation. It's not going to be good. <laughs> I feel Braveheart. bad. Like, Billy Gilmore is going to be in the middle dying. Yeah. It's going to be bad. I, I don't know if, like, England's figured out their, like, true starting lineup yet for the Euros. I don't... Yeah, they, yeah they have. It's no. Harry Kane and 10 warm bodies. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I was about <laughs> to say. Harry Kane, just put him up top, baby. So, in the World Cup, last World Cup, I put money down that Harry Kane would win the Golden Boot. And that mofo scores four goals in the group stage. And I had money down on Lukaku. Lukaku also scores four goals in the group stage. Both went dry the rest of the rest tournament. of the tournament. Yep. And 
Those motherfuckers also then played four games. They didn't just play the 16, the 8, the 4, and the final. They played four extra games because then they played against each other again in the third place game. Oh, and right. they had four games and neither of them scored. So I'm wondering, I'm hoping that Harry Kane has not only a good group stage, but also into the knockout rounds is still getting on the goal, getting on the sheet. Because he, for me, is probably my... Well, after not winning the PFA player of the year snub not winning the premier league player of the year snub i think they're both snubs and he's gonna might have a little chip in his shoulder i'm gonna go out and show the world well plus he's looking for that sweet he's looking for that sweet sweet new contract at man city well, he's he trying to get away from worth. spurs yeah spurs are like a toxic ex-girlfriend for him well it's like one of those things where like he needs to do well well he he actually doing poorly might lower his value which would be helpful for another team but He's not going to do that because he's he loves the English national team, so he'll probably score a bunch of goals. Uh, but I mean, let's talk about their defense, right? So they got Chilwell, Chilweezy, Reese well, James. What do you think they're playing? Do you think they're playing a four back or they're playing a three back? They're not they've playing. Been, they've been playing a four back. They're playing in a the four back, dude. And, That's what I assume. And Harry Maguire, he's a very big question mark for the tournament. So yeah. they, I think, he made the roster. He made the roster. He's been practicing. I think. Lightly, I don't know if he's gonna play. I mean, it's the tournament's coming up in like a few days. So who sits next next to Stones if he can't play? Looks like Mings has been playing. Mings, a lot. Tyrone Mings. Yeah, Tyrone Mings is good. He's not he's Harry okay. Maguire, he's, but he's he's okay. He's like a mm, that's my that's probably like my biggest. And then who starts in goal? Right. Who who do you start, oh, man? John, who do you start? I think. I hate Pickford. I think he is such yeah. a trick or treat goalkeeper. I think it's going to be Pickford. Trick or treat goalkeeper. Tell us more, dude. He makes some f- big time gaffes at times. I mean, he has. You guys talked about it all last year. The the whole Van Dyke thing and whatnot. He has oh, like all kinds Jesus. of blow up moments. Like, yeah, that was time. bonehead moment. He's a guy who's a VAR liability. He is. I and think so. I, then who do you start, Henderson? I would start Henderson. I mean, I think Henderson should have been Manchester United's starting goalkeeper most of this last year. De Gea is so yeah, the hell. Yeah. Oh, De Gea. Hot and cold. Hot and cold. Mostly cold these days. <laughs> mostly cold. Mostly an ice cube. Yeah. An ice cube. Yep. A little That's past his prime. All right. So, in the end, we got England and Croatia in the ones and twos. And then who do you got in the third potential? You had Scotland or Czech Republic? Czech Republic. Czech Republic? I don't know. I don't know anything about these. Seasons. I've got Scotland just because I think it'd be fun to see them get out and get into the group stage, but I don't really got no got no horses in that race. John, uh, it doesn't matter to me. I don't think the other two teams do much of anything. I, but I think the other two teams lose two games and don't have enough points to get yeah to get, get the third get the third one of the four third place finishes. So exactly. Group C, you got Netherlands, Ukraine, Austria, North Macedonia. So. <laughs> will North Macedonia pick up one point? Will they tie? How they even qualify? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like, I I know like there's oh. more people in like Boston than there is in North Macedonia. I'm pretty sure they can field a team. <laughs> I mean, it's like so. Ske- I'm so skeptical. It's like a high school teams. team from Iowa. That's brutal. Okay, well. So one of the on. things I will say, so my golden boot pick is going to be Harry Kane. Which is like not, you know, it's a conservative pick. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, my my pick, my other pick for Golden Boot is anyone on any of these teams who has to play freaking North Macedonia. <laughs> Memphis Depay could score like seven goals against them low key, dude. <laughs> these are the team. These are the like John said, the trick or treat teams, dude. These are like when we have to play Turks and Caicos and they're pulling dudes out of like local bars <laughs> and putting jerseys on them. Like, I'm I mean, sure that there's actually one or two official ballers, but come on. Memphis Depay has been playing pretty well. He has been playing pretty well. He's trying to get that Barcelona contract. He had two goals, uh, in, not today, but like in their game just a couple of days ago, and he scored again uh, today. Uh, he had a PK. So I'm going Memphis Depay golden boot only because he has to play against North Macedonia. I mean, it could be Ukraine. A, and Ukraine. Well, Ukraine's not bad. They got Sinchenko back there holding on Havertz. Low key punched in the gut to city fans. <laughs> Ukraine, yeah, they have to play Ukraine and North Macedonia. I think Memphis Depay could be also because in the World Cup in 2002 or 2006, one of those, the German player, what's his name? 
Close. 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 Scored four goals against Saudi Arabia, and that pushed him into beat Ronaldo's all time. And I still hold that over his head. I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> anyway, Close scored like five goals a tournament for three straight tournaments. It was I mean, give me a break. The most impressive, honestly, super impressive. So I got Netherlands and Austria coming out of this. Yeah, I Austria got, didn't look half bad. They were going for they were going for English ankles a couple days ago when they played them in a friendly. Austria's but. good. Austria. David Alaba. Austrians play ball. I got I got Netherlands and Austria coming out of this, and then a Ukraine in a potential third. Thoughts? Mm, they won't score enough points. Moving on, Group B. Mister <laughs> Optimistic. I just I mean I don't know I don't know. All right, let's go with Group B because we got to talk a little bit about Belgium and their chances. Denmark, Finland, Belgium, and Russia. Correct. John, who do you think is coming out of this? John is also wearing a fresh Belgian kit from 2018. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Uh, Belgium and does it matter who else? I mean, it does. Vladimir Putin's team is let's, in this. Let's group, just put John. it this way: you, you, I think if you put Lukaku as a Golden Boot winner, I think you have uh, stand a good chance. And I think honestly, Kevin De Bruyne might have a good chance at it if. As Where long they as, play think, him, they're going to play him as a fa- like a false nine, free floating kind of yeah. kind of deal. Yeah, I don't Remember know. Eden Hazard, yeah, uh, big big uh, tournament. <laughs> Big tournament, yeah. He's gonna be big <laughs> at the be, tournament. He's gonna, be, <laughs> he's gonna be fresh. <laughs> He'll be fresh on the bench. Yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen with Hazard. You know, honestly, like someone who I could have a good tournament is his brother. I would say Thorsten or something like Thorgan. that. Thorgan. Thorgan. <laughs> Thorsten. <laughs> Thorsten sounded Thorsten. like the right name. <laughs> Thorsten. I think I think his brother could actually have a really good tournament, and it's also a tournament where. Tealman's could this could be a tournament where oh, Tealman plays right. so well, he literally like Real or some team throws money at him like this. You know, we all see these tournament things every single time. There's a tournament, some guy plays super well and then he gets money thrown at him. Maybe he pans out, maybe he doesn't. But the hype alone will sell the jersey sales to almost make up for his transfer fee. Tealman's is a guy who could do it after watching that bomb that he hit against Chelsea. And watching him throughout the season, he was a huge part of why Leicester were competitive most of the season. And I think he was one of the only Leicester players to have played almost all the games. So he's healthy, he's fit. I think he could be he could be a game changer for this Belgium team. They're 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 gonna play a three four three most likely. Uh and their back three center backs are Vertongen, Alderweireld, and Denier. Which is the one of the weaker back threes from like the com- really competitive teams, in my opinion. This because is also just, just they're a, a little potential, old. though. This is also just a potential. I know, but that's probably what's gonna it's gonna be. So for me, that's a little suspect. But if they score a bunch of if Lukaku scores a bunch of goals, it doesn't really matter, right? So, so, I agree, John. If they get out of this group, they fin- You're saying they win this group? Doesn't even look like Hazard's on this. Am I missing something? But this hazardy, there he is. Okay, found him. Sorry, he's on there. Him and his bro. Him and his bro. Thorsten. 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 What's Thorsten his name? Has- Thorgan. Thorgan. Thorgan Hazard. Honestly, what's the difference between Thorsten and Thorgan? They're both <laughs> brutal. <laughs> They're both brutal. All, the, all our Belgian fans. <laughs> all our Belgian fans are hating us. They're right? hating There's us. There's a big difference. There's a big difference between Dave and Fuck. David. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people think this team is going to be. Very competitive. So, John, is this the other team for you other than Portugal or France to win it? Uh, I mean, Jeff's going to hate my answer, but I think England has a great shot to win this tournament. Oh, on paper, England has a great chance. I'm not saying – I don't think they're a paper champion anymore. They're, this is not like England okay. of like our generation growing up. It's all much right, different. All right, all right, all right. I think Southgate has a much better understanding of how to manage personalities and whatnot. It's a young team. It's a hungry team, and you've got Harry Kane leading the charge, so I think it's a great captain. Sure. Um, I give him that. I, I think it's a much different type of English team than we've seen in the past where you had, like, no offense to John Terry, but, like, how how well-liked was John Terry back in the day? The guy's sleeping with his own teammates. People hated him, hmm. hated his guts. Yeah, nobody liked that guy. Can't Can't have that. <laughs> not bad, he's, not good for sleep, team chemistry. He, he's sleeping with his left uh, left back on his club team and national team. They had to pick between who they wanted. Did they want uh, Wayne Bridge or whatever his name was? Or, Wayne Bridge. Or John Terry. They picked John Terry because he's a better player, but that t- 
tore the team apart. So I, I think this is a different English team. I, England and Belgium are fantastic. I could see both those teams getting the semifinals. Um, but I think at the end of the day, to me, the two best teams by far and away are, are Poland and Portugal, France, or Portugal and uh, France. Russia had a good World Cup last World Cup. They beat Spain and they went to the round of eight. It was in Russia. They were juiced. They were totally juiced. I'm not saying they're all they're not juiced, juiced up. I'm not saying they're not. It's not an Icarus situation. Okay. <laughs> so they made it out of the round of 16. They beat Spain. That's, however, when they were hosts. In 20, 2008, as I said, they went to the semis. They actually lost to Spain in the semis, but they had a good. So Russia can play, and Russia could be surprising. I'm just trying to figure out who comes second out of this group. I think it's probably Denmark. Definitely not Finland, probably. But who do you guys think is second between Russia and Denmark? And I'm assu- that's just on the assumption that it won't be Finland. I I honestly can't speak enough to those two teams. I mean, um, both have good players from good clubs and whatnot. And, you know, I, I love Denmark's goalkeeper. Obviously, I love, I love Schmeichel. I think... He's another one that's super underrated in world football um, and has been the backbone of that club um, for many, many years now. And uh, so I actually think this Denmark team could surprise. Yeah, I mean, they got they got Erickson, who he's not I mean, he's not the player that he used to be, obviously. I mean, he doesn't comes off the bench at Milan, but he can score a set piece goal. Uh, I think Hoiberg's that on the team. Hoiberg's on the team. They got, I think, Anderson, they're, that's, if he gets playing time as a center back, I think he's playing for basically a contract in the Premier League because he, he was on Fulham. So, I mean, he's been linked to a bunch of clubs um, to stay up in the Premier League. He's young. He's big. I think if he plays well, I think he has he, he, has, a, he has a lot to gain by playing well. So, and they got Christensen, who is an Braith, experienced. Braithwaite from, uh, yeah. I, I know I'm brutalizing his last name, but the Barcelona center forward. He's, he's solid. He's not a Barcelona level center forward, but he's a good center forward. He'll score goals. This is a team for me. This is my other dark horse. My dark horses are Germany, which normally is a classic favorite. This team for me is a dark horse. If they get out of the group, they'll come in second. And I think they could surprise people. This, this Danish team. Yeah, because a, Schmeichel in goal is worth. Yeah, he's very. He's good. worth a. He's worth a goal saving like something that should go in, but he'll save, save it every game, and that's all you need in a tournament. You just need like a crazy thing of fate, a little destiny. Erickson hits in a free kick, whatever. This to me, this team to me is is my other, and I think that they'll come in second, which in this group, which leaves I believe Russia in a potential best third situation. I think Russia is going to come through. I mean, I, I you beat Finland. Which they should, and maybe you get a draw against one of those other two teams. With four points, you're you're probably your best third, yeah. Sure. Because then the other like the other teams, some of the other thirds are going to get brutalized. Looking at Group A of Turkey, Italy, Wales, and Switzerland, this to me, other than Group F, with the Portugal France group, this to me is the other group of death, because Turkey balls, Italy doesn't let goals in historically. Wales has Gareth Bale, who is just like roll the dice if he's going to be Ronaldo or Messi or just whatever. And Switzerland plays, they're very competitive. This to me is actually going to be one of the closest groups. Because like the Portugal France group, I think we think Portugal and France will go through and they'll probably beat all the other teams. This group is the group where I actually don't even know who wins the group. I think this group could be a group where you see every team go one, one, and one. I think that could happen. Uh, but I also will tell you that I think Italy is on the come and they would be my other dark horse. So you have a kind of an odd situation where you have two traditional powers, in my personal opinion, in Germany and Italy that have been down for a number of years now that I think I shouldn't say Germany has been down for a number. They had a bad last World Cup tournament. And outside of that, they've been pretty damn good. But. I think Italy and Germany are both going to have bounce back tournaments. Let's just call it that. I think they're both going to be pretty good. Switzerland is very good. Switzerland's an excellent team. Because of Jiren Shakiri. <laughs> no, Grand Shaka. <laughs> Grand Shaka. God, I hate Grand Shaka, but they're a good Grand team. Xhaka. They're a very good team. 
And Turkey is a very interesting team because I think they've been scoring a ton of goals. I could be wrong about that, but um, let's look at their results. 2-0, 2-1, 3-3, 3-0, 4-2. I mean, they've, they've been scoring goals, and I don't think a lot of people know about them. I can't say that I can speak to much about them but they've been scoring a lot of goals and i think they could be a really fun team to watch in this tournament and sengi sunder so this oh, is yeah. the team with with donnarumma and the goal the guys played 200 no this is italy sorry sorry yeah, i'm talking about italy sorry so okay my bad i, I switched gears really quick for italy with with donnarumma and goal he's the guy i think who's going to be a tournament signing if he has a good tournament with italy because I'm pretty sure he's in free agency right now, or you know his contract is up, and they're either going to resign him, or whatever. He's played 250 games at the age of 23 for AC Milan. He's en route to like just be Buffon level historic goalkeeper. And I think if he has a good tournament with Spain, I excuse me with Italy, I just don't see how he's not gobbled up by a by a fairly large club, a top ten club in Europe. Yeah, I mean people know about him. Every. Uh... He might not be a household name in your podcast because you guys talk about the English Premier League primarily, but Donnarumma is maybe the best young goalkeeper in the world right now. He No, he is the best young goalkeeper. I'm saying this is the kind of thing where he could have a tournament and then get a huge contract. Because right now I've heard maybe 30 or 40 million for his name, but if he were to have a really good tournament or do something crazy, I, I don't know. I just feel like... Nobody's ever going to pay a would... cap of money for a goalkeeper again. Yeah. Not Chelsea. <laughs> I mean, money. I mean, it's guy. true. It's too much of a roll of a dice. Uh, I agree with you. I think the guy's got, a, I think, a year left on his contract, so he maybe has a buyout, so there might be a team that buy uh, that will go after him. But, yeah, he's been linked to English clubs. That's I've seen that. This Welsh team is also going to be very interesting. They've got a bunch of young kids with Williams from United, Bale. Sorry, he's excuse old. Excuse me, Williams from Liverpool, excuse me. Bale, who's not young, but Daniel James. You've got Roden. Roden. Well, who's the guy? Uh, Billy Gilmore is on this team as well. You got Davis. No, sorry, Billy Gilmore. Scotch. <laughs> you have Davies. Do you have Davies at at left back on that team? Starting left back. That's know. rough. If that he's the starting left back, that is rough. Because they got Roden, who's like twelve. They got <laughs> fresh out of the championship, played like twelve minutes in the uh, Premier League for Spurs, and then they got Gareth Bale, who won't. Well, you know, he's he's gotten he as long as he doesn't get injured. I mean, he, he'll have a few moment here. As long as the guy doesn't get injured between now and then on the links on the back nine. <laughs> he doesn't throw his back out in the Yeah, it doesn't like stretch an oblique. Jared, they've got a lot of guys on this. Yeah, they're young, but they got a lot of guys from the championship and like yeah, division not. two and like So you're saying they're gonna win the group. I mean they're not gonna Luton Town. John that's Charleston Athletic. John, put some respect on these guys. Bournemouth. Names. Sheffield United's uh, top Swansea City. Who I Stoke this is actually City, the most Cardiff like, City. This is actually probably the most difficult thing. Who do you guys think? Give me your give me. How does this how does this break down? The top two all the way one one through four in this group. This is brutal. I actually like Italy one. Okay. So, I I, I'm gonna go Italy. Uh, no, I'm gonna go Switzerland one. <laughs> Why? Based on what? Based on their team's baller. Based on that historically, loves, they he loves they Jordan Shakiri in dude. tournaments. And Jordan Shakiri is the human cube god. Ah, <laughs> uh, Sha- 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 Grand Jaka red card. Two thousand second Spain. minute of the first game. Two thousand ten Spain. The only Stomps game on they somebody. lost was to a Switzerland team. The Swiss caused problems god, for, dude. For, for, for for Italy. Teams. Italy is, sta- is has a very very good team. Very very good team. I'm going Switzerland. Italy, Turkey, and then Wales. Brutal. Sorry. Wales, Wales is going to be fourth. Sorry, Wales. I'll go. Yeah, I'm going to go Italy, Switzerland, Turkey, Wales. Turkey, Wales. John, I'm going to give it to my my homeboy from uh, freshman year of Owu. Uh, Italy one, Turkey two, Switzerland three, Wales four. Switzerland gets through. Turkey balls, the Turks ball. So I they think, could. I also think Gareth Bale has a big incentive to end this, end his, get his off season started. <laughs> <laughs> What's that incentive? Golf. That's the incentive. <laughs> you think? You think? Okay. So I've heard a couple conspiracy theories coming out of you tonight. 
One is that Gareth Bale may throw the tournament so he can get on the back nine. <laughs> the other is that Harry Kane may throw the tournament so he goes in cheaper so Tottenham can actually sell him. There you go. You've said both of those things I, in as many words. Well, he, I mean, I don't think Harry, the Harry Kane thing is actually, that's an actual thing. But I think Gareth Bale <laughs> has come out and said that he this he loves go- he, golf is his passion. S- football is his job. So... That was well paraphrased. That was that's basically what he said. Bale's direct quote. All right, I'm gonna go Golden Boot, either Harry Kane or Memphis Depay, strictly because the northern Ma- the northern Macedonia situation. <laughs> God, young player of the tournament, Mason Mount, <laughs> the young player of the Premier League snub, <laughs> and I'm gonna go Golden Glove. That I have zero idea because I don't even know who's gonna start other than like I, Golden Glove. Honestly, I'm gonna go Peter. I'm gonna go Peter. I'm gonna go Schmeichel. Not Peter Schmeichel. Not Peter Casper. Schmeichel. Casper. I couldn't think of his name. Casper. <laughs> the family goes. Casper Schmeichel. That's my calls. John, you're up. Who's your Who's your Golden Boot? Your young player in Golden Glove. You mentioned Lukaku for the Golden Boot, and I think that's a phenomenal pick. I mean, Belgium will probably go do. I didn't mention any Portuguese or any French. Patricio for Golden Glove. <laughs> Is they don't give up gold like they're they're good. Mbappe golden boot, Oof, likely. Yes, uh, unless he's hurt. Unless he's, he's coming, that injury is dude, nagging. If I can put money down this Memphis Depay thing, I'm putting a solid twenty US. Mbappe bills young player of the tournament. <laughs> Mbappe golden club. <laughs> <laughs> Mbappe, Mbappe, Mbappe. No, no, Mbappe golden boot. And I don't know if he's eligible for the young player. I of the believe tournament. he is. I think he is. I believe he is. Yeah. So young player of the tournament as well. Actually, and we didn't even say like the MVP of the tournament. Is that another thing too? Golden ball. Is golden there, ball. Yeah, golden, golden ball. ball. Yeah, I think there is. Yeah. Okay. He, so he could he could win that as well. Win. No, I don't know. Um, I think he wins the golden boot. I think he wins young player of the tournament. I think. I think Patricio honestly might win the uh, golden gloves. I, I respect that guy a lot. I, I like him quite a bit. Um, I think he gets golden gloves. I think we see a Portugal France rematch in the final, and I think it's a very similar outcome. Portugal wins. Jeff, where are you? Harry Kane, Golden Boot. 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 Uh, I'm going to say young player as. Yeah, Mason Mount, probably. Uh, and I'm going to say Golden Glove goes to none other than. Hugo Lloris. I was going to say, he's a good pick. I mean, very good goal- goalkeeper. Either, very Either the French, the Portuguese, the English, or the. Belgian. Hugo Lloris stinks. <laughs> Absolutely. He doesn't stink. Stinks. Wow, this guy. Deep. John, John's got an opinion. Yeah, well. I think uh. I think Hugo Lloris is like Fabian Bartes 2.0. Lefty version of Fabian Bartes. I don't think you're wrong, actually. They both won also the World stink. Cup, and they're both kind of like. Oh, by stack. And, and they're both not ever in the top five. I guess maybe Fabian Bartes was because he was on United. I don't know. I mean, Luis didn't let in a lot of goals this year, so. It's true. I saw Hugo Lloris on the ESPN uh, all bad team roster this year for goalkeepers. They rated him as like one of the top three worst goalkeepers in the league. I'm just saying he might have a good tournament. Uh, I think it's a good pick because I think France could win, so they have a pretty strong team. Oh, do I have to call who's going to win the tournament? Oh, yeah. We should call who's going to win. I'm going with France or... Oh, God. Just pick one. (laughs) Belgium. France or Belgium. (sighs) Belgium's been knocking on the door for years for for, for big trophies. I really want Belgium to win, but I unfortunately think that France is going to win. Damn it. Yeah. It's going to be so boring. It's going to be like a... It's going to be a France... I I agree with John. It's going to be like a France-Portugal final. It's going to be so boring. I'm going to be like... (sighs) Fall asleep. Jeff, all right, all right, all right, Mr. Big Stuff. You don't want France. You don't want Portugal. You hate England. Who do you want in the final? No, who do I want in the final? Who do you want in the who final? Who I think is going to be in the final. Besides Spurs. I don't want Spurs in the I don't, I mean, this turn, I mean, I've got, I don't have really a horse in this race, to, so to speak. Who are your horses? <laughs> I, I want to see Belgium in the final. You want to see Belgium? That's it. That's, you would like to see Belgium? Belgium in another team. It's yeah, fine. 100%. Yeah. Belgium in another team. It would be cool to see. Belgium. They're very light. I don't know. For me, they're just kind of like a likable team. 
I Belgium's been my favorite team for a number of years yeah. now. Kevin De Bruyne is my f- the reason why I wanted City to win the Champions League is because Kevin De Bruyne is my favorite player to watch. Currently. Yeah, he's good to watch. They got some good good guys up there. Lukaku Running also around. plays a lot differently for Belgium than he. I shouldn't say for Inter because I haven't watched him play at Inter, but like then he did for like all the English league teams that he was on, whether it was Everton or Chelsea or who or West else Brom. Was, or West Brom, whoever else he was playing for. He played like an abs. He plays like an absolute beast for that team. He does. He does. I think Lukaku. I kind of United. I think doesn't Be- doesn't Belgium have a bunch of players who like are actually French and then but they got Belgian citizenship probably. It's a like Francophone Lukaku. country. Yeah, it's like. I don't know. All those European countries, the guys just kind of like pick where they want to play. That's true. I mean, look yeah. at the U.S. team. We can't Emmerich really Laporte that. playing for Spain all of a sudden out of nowhere. Yeah, it's <laughs> very weird. That's true. But it's easier to do that in Europe than it is to do in the United States. Those guys were actually like, you know, they get to pick, but these guys can just become French citizens. Like they can just decide. It's true. I mean, Messi's a Spanish citizen and has been for right. Exactly. He just capped obviously with argentina right all you could, those guys yeah they're all dual either citizens. way i i'm i'm not knocking it i'm just saying that's a thing yeah i mean if we look historically that's the biggest reason why i think spain won in 2008 because they had marco senna who was brazilian and he played in the middle with xavi and Javi alonso and that's why spain won in 08 you think that was the biggest reason they won? No, it wasn't the biggest reason, but I'm saying when you have an import from another country, it helps out your like player pool. I mean, you look at Cameron Nese with Italy, that helped out tremendously. He also Argentine. had Carlos Puglio, who was one of the like top two or three center backs in the I world mean, at the time. You had, you had, you, no, you had, you had the best team ever Iker in Casillas, you had, yeah, ex- exactly. I'm saying it helps to have every <laughs> single Torres, national team. Fernando Torres, David Villa. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying every single national team is helped out by immigrants. Iniesta. Every single World World Cup team. It doesn't. They're not really immigrants, though. Like that's the thing. That's what I'm trying to. The point I'm trying to make is that they didn't like really move there. They just decided they wanted to play for that country. Yeah, sometimes, 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 not. sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. I mean, they, it's not like they they're like oh, the the okay. whole Brazil to Spain thing is really strange to me because like that's not they're not geographically Diego next to each other. Yeah, Diego Diego Costa. <laughs> Diego Costa, he, yeah. like doesn't even, <laughs> you know, uh, there's just a bunch of guys there. But anyways, wrap this up, Jeff. Hopefully we'll get to see your Belgium in another team. So you're happy to watch the Euro. Okay. I'm excited. It's just good football to watch. I mean, this is good football. I mean, I get to see more North Macedonia play. I mean, this is a dream come true. I think this could be an awesome tournament. I really do. Like the Euros usually have a little bit more entertaining games, I think, in the knockout rounds than like the World Cup tr- traditionally does. I think teams kind of go for it a little bit more. And there are some teams that I mean, I don't think people know a lot about the Netherlands. The Netherlands is a pretty good team. Mm. You know, I don't think a lot of people know about Italy. Italy's a really good team. Do we Italy, know do Italy's we, a dark horse? Germany Germany people are down on. Germany's a good team. Italy's not a dark horse, they're just not in the pre- like they're not talking about the team a lot. It's just not mentioned that much. I don't think that and I don't think that's what I think this, that's what this French team doesn't this French team's an all time team. Yeah. I mean they were in the final level. of the last Euros. They won the last World Cup and they're the heavy prohibitive favorites to win this not only the Euros, but the next World Cup and they're young. I mean they're they're not going anywhere. And they only got bounced out in twenty fourteen by correct me if I'm wrong, by Germany. They lost one nothing to Germany. France had a beast of a team in the 2014 World Cup. They just Germany was better. Germany beast of that tournament. So they've been knocking on the door for a while for for silverware. Obviously, they won it in 2018. They won the World Cup. That's why I think I think France are favorites. France for me are favorites. Do you agree or do you think Portugal are favorites, John? Or even Belgium? Excuse me. I think France is the favorite by far, but I to me I think Portugal is going to win it. I think that they have. They have the right pieces in place uh, and the right spots to be able to stifle a team like France for a long enough period of time and then at the same time pick their moments when they're going to go forward and win the game. I mean, with Joao Felix, Ronaldo, Bernardo Silva, and Bruno Fernandes going forward, I think at any point in the match, any one of those guys could win a game for you. And then, you know, with Diaz as your center back, protecting things back there, and Pepe, who's an old veteran, an old Wiley veteran at this point. 
and Patricio is your goalkeeper. I think that's a really solid back line. If it's a if it's those two teams in the final, it will be way more exciting because the last time the final was not very exciting. It was kind of flat, and then Eder scored the goal in the final, a couple minutes of overtime, like minute 116, which was cool. I would like to see that, or I'd like to see either Portugal or France versus Belgium in the final. I just think that would be phenomenal because the Belgian-France game in the semi of the last World Cup was a really solid game. It was a low-scoring game, but it was like you know, 3D chess. Everything that was happening on the field was so calculated and... It was a good one. If I had to pick a final that I would want to see, Belgium's definitely in it for me as well. And then I would either pick Germany or England. I would want to see the like a combination of those three teams playing in the final. I just don't think England has a chance. I, I don't know why. I think it's. I think honestly, it's just maturity. I think I it's. See, I think it's like them just kind of like playing well together. I don't know if if that's going to happen because they're not like they're not. When I watch them play the friendlies, I know that it's hard to gauge it off their friendlies, but it's not like they're scoring a ton of goals. I mean, I mean, guess they're solid defensively, but I think it's hard to know what for... team's going to show up. That's what that's kind of what I because like Harry Kane can go cold. Like it's not he he his ankles are popsicle sticks. He cannot if he. I think for England to win, what they have to do is they have to really have some. They have to realize that while in English Premier League may be the best league in the world they have to have some hubris around the fact that two of the players i think they need to give time to in order to win the tournament are playing in Borussia dortmund with sancho and bellingham i think those guys have to be on the field for them to win in my opinion sancho yes bellingham absolutely not bellingham's not there yet i think bellingham's phenomenal i would put him in the middle and just let him run he looked really good for me in the champions league game over declan rice uh no, I think he's more attacking than Declan. So are you gonna drop Mason Mount or Phil Foden then? I'm putting Phil Foden higher up. I'm putting Mason Mount, Declan, and Bellingham in the middle, and I put Foden, Kane. Oh, you, you drop Rashford. Uh, no, yes. I put Foden, Kane, and Rashford up top. Four three three. And then no defense, just all <laughs> attacking. No, it's not. No, it's not. Four three three. And then Grealish up there too. Just throw Grealish in there. No, too. no, no. Four three three. <laughs> we have, they have so many outside backs. That's not a problem. They got Stones. Henderson and goal four through three. I mean, it's not it's what most teams play these days. Hold on, give me your lineup again. My my lineup again. Start from the back. Start from the back. Stones and I'm not really sure who's going to be the other. You know, ideally it'd be McGuire. And then on the outsides, I seriously can never get it straight with England. They have like nine dudes that are all studs. You have Trippier just won with Atletico Madrid. You have Kyle Walker with Man City. You have Reese James with Chelsea. You have Chilwell with Chelsea. And then I feel like. There's, you know, Luke Shaw was probably the best left back in the Premier League. Luke Shaw was one of the best players in the Premier League. So you got him. So they're flooded with outside backs. I'm not sure, like on what side, honestly, they play. I always get, I always get backs. Luke Shaw. It'll be between Luke Shaw and Chilwell for for left back, okay. left wing back. Okay. It'll be Reece, between Reese James, Kyle Walker, and, and Kyle Walker. I don't think Trip. I, I, I mean, Trippy is not in the conversation with yeah. me over those two because those two are phenomenal. So okay, whatever one you want others. on either okay, side. Fine. Yeah. Continue. Okay. Then I've got in the holding, I've got Declan, and then in front of him, I've got Mason Mount and Bellingham, kind of in like dueling tens. And then I've got Foden on an outside, Rashford on an outside, and Kane in the middle. So you, you said you wanted to play Sancho, but now you're saying you're not. Sorry, play sorry, Sancho. sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I want to play. I want. No, I actually want to go Rashford and Sancho, Kane and Foden's first off the bench for one of those guys. <sighs> Foden, like everyone, everyone goes freaking crazy for Foden. He can't fucking play defense when you compare him with other, all those other guys. Those other guys are bigger bodies. Those, even those other even guys Kane plays better the defense than him. You don't, even Kane will play better defense than him. You don't put yeah. David Silva on the bench for Spain. You don't put Iniesta on the spe- on the bench for Spain. He's That's not, the type of guy he is. I, John, I totally agree that he's he will be that type of guy. I just he I haven't seen it guy. yet. He is now. Have, he's that when he plays for City and they have a billion dollar team. And he gets the service that he gets. But you saw him in the Champions League final, dude. He was fucking zilch. I, the last three times I've seen him play against Chelsea, he's done nothing. He's done nothing. And it's a tournament. So There's, These defenses are brutal. I agree with everything except for Bellingham. I think Foden will play over Bellingham. Foden will probably play over Bellingham. Bellingham is my own personal opinion. I just think he's going to shake it up. But Bellingham I, is I a... Ch- is the a FA is really brutal, and they can't choose these guys out of the Bundesliga, like Sancho or Bellingham, because they'd rather play Foden, Rashford, and Kane. And I think Sancho is probably better than one of them. 
Bellingham is a championship player who Talk got about Sancho. Sancho. I know Bellingham is uh, is he's, he's probably not there yet. Or Fourteen, not a starter for sure. But Sancho has got to play over. He's if Sancho doesn't start, England will have problems. Is my opinion. Yeah, Sancho says should start, and I don't see anybody starting over him on that right flank or the left flank. Rashford will start on the other flank, and Kane will be a center forward. And then you have Foden in the ten. Definitely with Mount. With Mount. Mount playing as I an mean, eight, and Declan playing as a six. That midfield's phenomenal. I it think is. That, I think that midfield. I just love what Bellingham did over the couple legs with Borussia you against have a, City. You have a much more balanced midfield with this English. That's uh, another thing that people don't recognize. Lampard and Gerard were the same player, and that was and Scholes was like very much the same player. That which is why that midfield never worked out. You, it was like when City decided to play with three attacking center midfielders in the Champions League final and should have played with the six to start but instead they go with i think they're gonna get i think they're gonna get caught in transition a little bit when in the midfield i think they will i think and i think that and i remember henderson's on that team too but i think the i think that's the key i think if henderson is able to be fit and play that's will help them out so then henderson takes out rice yeah uh, he's coming off the bench. I was looking. He's come off the bench a couple in their friendlies recently. I don't know how match fit he is at this point. So, so, so if they, if so, if they're up the field and they get caught in transition and Maguire's not playing <laughs> and it's just between it's Tyrell Mings Stone, and John Stones in the middle. Stones is only as good as the, the center back next to him. Stones is only good. And I, I agree with you. I think the that's speed who they're on the try to outsides, expose. they're gonna they'll be okay. Minus Luke Shaw is not a speedster, but Chilwell, he's got speed though. He's fast enough. He's, does, he's the best, not he's the best like Kyle Walker. Guy. No, Kyle, Kyle Walker's so fast. Like he should just well, be I mean, a sprinter. I, I guess my problem with England is I don't see maturity in the back line. I don't see it. I don't see that leader. Like Aspilicueta, I gave him shit all season, but that guy's a freaking leader, and he's a legend at Chelsea. And he's been there almost a decade, so people listen to him. And he's an older dude. He's in his like you know early thirties. The the back line I see I just see a lot of f boy haircuts I mean these dudes are just they're younger dudes they're younger dudes yeah I mean that's where England has their problems the center back has been their bugaboo since Terry and Ferdinand basically got old and they it's haven't okay. been able to, yeah they haven't been able to replace those guys but like if I was Southgate and I was gonna play a little bit more conservatively which it looks like they sort of have. You keep your outside backs home a little bit more and say, look, but, you really pick your moments and protect the house. And we have enough firepower between our tens and our forwards to be able to get the job done. I mean, and yeah, that's that's going to be it. Because, yeah, I remember Stones wasn't even on the team up until like yeah. halfway through the season because they, they, you know, so like who is the, it was going to be Maguire and who like and then Mal Maguire is hurt. So I still think that like Stones could turn into old stones and mcguire doesn't you know what i mean <laughs> to kidney stone <laughs> yeah he, <laughs> like he's playing next to mings and mings has been like a halfway decent center back all season the mings pick was one of the in- most interesting picks but then i just realized as john's pointed out england just they don't have any center backs. like yeah. that's they're very they have so many people to choose from in the front half of the field i feel like but like it gets skinny as they go in the back in the middle on the outsides there's so many guys apparently but you could also see a situation too where Southgate pulls a fast one and decides to play three five two again. I mean, Kyle Walker played as a center back in the last World Cup and did a really good. He plays the right center back and did a really good. And then Trippier played alongside him on the right, and that was a really nice combination. For the three five two that they did with Harry Maguire in the middle was brutal to break down. So if they just put John Stones in that middle position and put people Stone. beside him, I I agree with you. I mean, that was Colombia could couldn't get Luke into Shaw, that. Stones Walker together, then you put. Reese James on one wing back, and you put Trippier as the other wing back, or or Sancho as a wing so then back. Then that takes someone out of the middle. So who you put in the middle? You, then you put Rice. You don't take anybody out of the middle. You still have the same midfield. You take somebody out of the forward line. Okay, who do you take out? So you have Kane and who up top? Kane and Sancho up top. Kane and Rashford. I think it's probably Kane and Rashford, but okay. that's going to be a good one. I mean, in England, and, and this is the no thing, uh, right? Kyle Walker's going to want. I mean, the problem with Kyle, like now the way that Kyle Walker's been playing for the last couple of years is that he's he plays in, in an advanced role at times, and so he's used to getting up the field. He's not going to want to stay. stay. I, I I think you have a valid point, but they're going to play a four a, a four. They're going to play a four back, but I agree with John. Maybe they should play they a should three back. should play a three back, maybe. Just because of their personnel. Yeah, maybe. Anyway. I think it all depends if Maguire is healthy. Oh, if Maguire is healthy, they're going to go four back, and I think yeah. that they're going to score a lot of goals. 
they if Maguire's healthy, they could they could they could make win this run. tournament. Make a good run. Yeah. Because there'd be difficult. Well, I just want to let all our listeners know they will be on the, all 30, 39 of the games will be on ESPN. Seven of the games will be on ESPN two, and five of the games will be on ABC. People want to watch the games. That's what they'll be on. Good to know, Jeff. <laughs> the information out there. Just giving the people what they want. Just giving the people what they want. I didn't know up until I looked at it. I gotta free up some space in my DVR to make sure I'm got every single game recorded. Mm-hmm. Gotta free up the space. John, thank you for coming into the studio. Actually, in here. Physically, first guest ever. Yep. Love it. Love to see it. Well, thanks for joining us. Ciao. Ciao. Thanks for listening to the Boys and Bolos podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, Twitch, at Boys and Bolos. If you'd like to be a guest, please reach out. You can hit us on any of the social media accounts that Jeff just mentioned or email us directly at boysandbolos at gmail.com. Thanks for listening and see you next time.